As the leading organization of local government professionals, the International City County Management Association is dedicated to creating and sustaining thriving communities throughout the world. During months of national political unrest and amid a global pandemic, ICMA has provided direction and resources to city and county managers across the country. This year's theme is Restart, and this week ahead is dedicated to developing strategies and foundations to help do just that. We are here to cover it all. This is ICMA TV. Hello and welcome to ICMA TV. I'm your host, Autria Godfrey, and I will be taking you through the next four days of the 2021 ICMA Annual Conference. From here in Portland, Oregon, we will hear from keynote speakers on key issues like the coronavirus pandemic, racial equity and justice, and dealing with emergencies and disasters. We will take a tour across the country to highlight cities nationwide who are at the forefront of tackling these issues. We strive to be a model county government. We need to listen to our community and we need to adapt our services to meet their demands. And meet the trailblazers who are setting a new standard in leadership. You can see news and highlights from ICMA TV anytime on the dedicated page on the ICMA website and on our YouTube channel and Twitter feed. But first, with this year's focus on restarting here at ICMA, let's get started with ICMA Research Director Tad McGalliard, who is highlighting how cities across the country are attempting a pandemic rebound utilizing the American Rescue Plan Act. Tad, thanks for your time this morning. Well, thanks for having me. So let's jump right in. ARPA included more than $130 billion in direct flexible aid for local governments. Where do you see that money was most needed? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good question, and I think there are some places that will tell you they didn't really even need the money. But what it does provide is a real transformative moment. It gives local governments opportunities to do things with money that they may not have been able to do in the absence of it. And so how has this helped local governments address revenue shortfalls? It, there have been uh, some places that have had some pretty significant revenue shortfalls as a result of this, particularly those places that have um, economies that are based around tourism and require those kinds of taxation programs. A lot of local governments have come out of this smelling a little sweeter than they thought they might have, but the money is going to be very, very important uh, as they work to rebuild and retest some things going forward. And speaking of rebuilding, how important would you say these ARPA funds were to helping these local governments try to make it through this once in a lifetime pandemic? I think that story is still ready to be written because uh, the funding is just now getting to local governments and they're starting to figure out what they want to do with it. So I think when we look down the road in three or four years, we're going to see some pretty interesting things happening here over the next few years. And as these local governments figure out how they want to allocate that money, you've actually out put together a list of resources to help these local mm -hmm. governments best utilize these funds. Where can they find that? So we just did a survey as well on this topic, and it outlines some very interesting information, which you can all find at ICMA.org. All right, Ted, thanks for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. To see this idea in action, let's head to Gaston County, North Carolina, where they responded rapidly to COVID-19 to serve and protect the community. They were able to keep businesses and residents afloat through small business loan programs and direct aid to residents. The county's first ever strategic plan was adopted in March of this year. We're very fortunate in Gaston County to have very strong relationships with the school system, with, with Caremont, uh, with our business community. This has been the most active period I've seen in not only our county, but in the Charlotte region in 37 years. In the early 1970s, we had almost 30,000 people employed in textiles, and today we have about 2,000. Now it's more diversified than ever before with uh, small businesses, tech parks. The Charlotte region is a huge advantage because of the airport and all the amenities that we have. I'd have to mention the Fiber Innovation Center and we've got partners like Parkdale Mills and American Cotton. Innovation and adaptation might be the words of the year when it comes to COVID. We launched the platform to deliver health and safety information directly to our citizens. I can't say enough how proud I am of our staff. We leased a bank branch so that folks could drive through and make their tax payments. Now we're probably in the best competitive position we've been in. Our county is expanding and I think it's headed in the, in the right direction.
The need for global engagement among local governments has never been stronger. And here to talk more about how he plans to expand ICMA's global footprint is Alexander Boucher, Managing Director for Global Engagement. Thank you for your time today. You know, some in the local government sphere might think, why do I need to think globally? I should just focus on my own little local community. Why should they embrace having a global footprint? Well, first of all, because the association has its mission, and the mission is to uh, promote and support communities around the world. I think it is uh, one of the best uh, uh, and, and, and the most uh, uh, beneficial mission you could have. So members around the world which uh, uh, support and, and believe in ICMA benefits from uh, being a global organization. Also, ICMA has an eye in its uh, name, so for international, and being international really requires to have a, a very strong thinking and support for the global, uh, for global engagement and community, and also its membership. So in your position, as you start to assess cross-border opportunities, what is it that you're looking for? I'm looking for most of all is how to benefit the members, is really to find those opportunities for professional development, for recognition, for exchange of the best practices between the uh, uh, opportunities and the uh, models around the world benefit U.S. members, members outside the United States, and of course, uh, in process, the profession itself. So you've been in this position for four months now, but oh, looking yes. ahead, congratulations. What have you put together as ICMA's new strategy when it comes to global engagement? Oh, well, it's a great question. We are really working on it. This is going to be very, very thoughtful and detailed process to put it together. We do not have a strategy at the moment, but it is a, a very, very important that everybody from the governance to the membership of this organization thinking and really uh, want to develop a very uh, uh, inclusive and beneficial strategy moving forward. So we are right now in the middle of development. Wonderful. Well, the theme here this week is restart, refocus, re-engage. Have you found that that restart theme goes across American borders? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the time we live in and, and experience is, is not U.S. It's a, it's a global epidemic. We went through a very uh, serious struggle and uh, restarting our uh, professional association, we're really inviting and uh, seeing more and more people outside the United States sharing with us their experience. We will have uh, right now here at the, at the conference uh, several uh, delegations from the countries which are going to share with us their experience and struggle and some wins which we would love to mm -hmm. hear about, would love to exchange. All right, Alexander Boucher, welcome to ICFA and thank you so much for your time thank today. Thank you, I appreciate it, thank you. A community of opportunity for all. That's one mayor's vision for his city, and it's working. In West Palm Beach, Florida, Mayor Keith James is attracting unprecedented interest and investment in his city, even seeing a surge of corporate relocations to his own community. Let's see how he's doing it. Creating a community of opportunity for all. So that will involve economic development, uh, but also maintaining a healthy, high quality of lifestyle. We want to make certain that we focus on areas within the city that have not historically benefited from the tremendous growth and development within our city. I think one of the big steps forward we've made is our mayor's uh, placement of diversity and inclusion right at the center of his administration. One of the things I feel very strongly about is that I want this growth to provide opportunities for every citizen in this city. The city is very focused on making sure that not only do we have great jobs, but there are jobs for all residents. We are bringing in some of the best corporations in America. We have some of the best cultural offerings. We want West Palm Beach to be the shining light on the hill for Palm Beach County and South Florida. From one coastline to another, Hermosa Beach, California is striving to tailor their government services to the needs of residents. This means curating public services to public need in crisis management and emerging with a decision making approach and style that opens the table to everyone. Time to take a look at how Hermosa shines. Hermosa Beach is over 100 years old. We're in the greater Los Angeles region. We have 20,000 residents. To bring Hermosa Beach back from this pandemic, we met daily to talk about the impacts on our residents, on our businesses. 
This led to our Hermosa Shines plan, our community's recovery and resilience plan. We had the opportunity to do outdoor dining deck. We had community members organizing efforts to shop local and pick up. We've transformed public spaces to allow our businesses to thrive during the pandemic. We added a bike lane on Hermosa Avenue and Pier Avenue. We became a much more relevant part of the city partnership and we worked with all the city teams. If there was a neighborhood issue, a concern, we would ask somebody to host it in their front lawn. We would go to them, they can invite their neighbors. We have realized how resourceful we are and our residents have this opportunity to experience this new approach to public service. Governing in Marin County, California will never be the same after lessons learned during the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's head across the Golden Gate Bridge to the county seat of San Rafael, where local leaders say their new role is to provide a safety net for their community. County governments have a very important role in being the safety net for our community. And because of that, we need to continuously adapt to our community needs. I think government will change forever because of this pandemic, because we have learned so much about delivering services in a way that's appropriate for our community members. In Marin County, we had a really successful response, I believe because it was led with an equity lens. We were one of the first counties in the state to have a drive-through testing. The mass vaccination sites here in Marin have also been a great success. And we're really proud that 98% of our Latinx community have received the vaccine. We strive to be a model county government. And I think the lessons we learned from the COVID response will help us going forward. We need to listen to our community. We need to collaborate with our community partners and we need to adapt our services to meet their demands. As we kick off this first day of the 2021 ICMA Annual Conference, let's see what attendees are looking forward to the most. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, finding out what other communities are doing to address the Delta variant, and particularly, what are they doing to encourage employees to be vaccinated and to be safe? I'm looking forward to all the educational sessions, uh, meeting and networking with lots of professionals and other managers from across the country and some international folks as well. So really excited about all those opportunities that the conference will provide to me. Uh, I came here to see the newest smart city trends and what's happening in the field of technology related to local government and how communities could benefit from technology and evolve. Out of this year's conference, I'm mostly looking forward to the fellowship. It has been a difficult two years for most people. I miss my colleagues. I miss being in rooms with others who share the same passion and love I do for local government. The Research Triangle Park in Durham, North Carolina is the largest research park in the country. During 2020, new economic development announcements were made, including Google, Eli Lilly, and more, and all thanks to a partnership with Durham's research universities to train the workforce for jobs of the future. Let's take a look. Durham County can best be described as an inclusive, innovative, and collaborative place. A place where all are welcome, a great place to do business, and a great place to live and raise a family. I've seen Durham grow from 1986 when I moved here to a town that is innovative industry-wise. It's technology, the greatest hospitals, the greatest universities. It has gone to a place that people love to come to and, and, and stay, not just visit, but stay. What excites me the most about the future of Durham is really watching how we continue to grow for the benefit of the entire community. Obviously with number of companies, global companies, national companies looking to locate here or expand, it's really critical to watch how we grow equitably and making sure that those who have been invested longest in our community have a chance to grow and take advantage of the new opportunities that are coming to our community. Ultimately, what we want is for someone that's born in Durham, raised in Durham, goes to school in Durham, to be able to work in Durham.
Hi, I'm Jeremy Figgerton, Director of Conferences and Sponsorships for ICMA. Get ready, because we've got so much in store for you this week. Coming up tomorrow, we hear from keynote speaker Chief Carmen Best, former Seattle Police Chief, about breaking barriers and tackling racial justice. Plus, we have our Exhibit Hall grand opening tomorrow night. And if you love puppies, I hope to see you there. Thanks to Jeremy and thank you for joining us on day one of ICMA TV. There is still much to come this week from the 2021 ICMA Annual Conference and from ICMA TV. We will be bringing you in-depth interviews with keynote speakers, highlighting new strategies in leadership and management from across the country. You can see news and highlights from ICMA TV anytime on the dedicated page on the ICMA website and on our YouTube channel and Twitter feed. We will see you right back here tomorrow. Tomorrow.